My name is Heidi Bright, and I'm going to talk about subduing the dis-ease dragon, the ABCs of creating conditions for healing. It all started for me in 2009. I got the paralyzing message, there was no cure for this type of uterine cancer. I was terrified and in shock. I didn't even know what to ask. It was already end stage, stage four, with the most aggressive cells. What do you do? Sound familiar? Sitting in the doctor's office and you hear the word cancer or some other debilitating disease? If that doesn't sound like a death sentence, I don't know what does. Then it hit me. I'm a mother. What's going to happen to my kids? With all due respect, the doctor had very little to offer. I also remembered my mother passing from breast cancer. That was horrible, and I didn't want to repeat that for myself. This is the dis-ease dragon. It can feel overwhelming. It can feel like your life is on fire. I faced two years of really tough chemotherapy treatments, 42 days of infusions three major surgeries, but the cancer was relentless. It kept coming back. After my third major surgery, guess what news I got? Get your affairs in order. Like my life was over. Yet during those two years, I underwent an enormous personal makeover. I changed my attitudes, my behaviors, and made some major life choices. This brought healing to my heart and my mind. And my body followed. I have been free of evidence of disease and free of any medical treatment for cancer for, since 2011. Then I realized I had used my journalism background to research everything I could to save my life. And my friends agreed, you've got to write a book. You've got to get this information out there to help other people. And that's how Thriver Soup was born. It's traditionally published, has more than 250 practical tips for the healing journey. And it's endorsed by a surgeon and breast cancer patient advocate. And then, Something wonderful happened. Readers from all over began connecting with me, telling me how Thriver Soup was giving them genuine hope and options. Here's a message that came through on Facebook. We have our first appointment with our oncologist on Monday. The course of treatment we are expected to have presented to us features aggressive radiation. As I opened Thriver Soup, I flipped over a few pages and stopped on page 79, right there, outlined with specific questions for particular physicians was the key to a much more successful and informative consult with the radiology oncologist. Heidi's book is already helping us in miraculous ways, and I really like the format she's chosen. So much great advice is packed onto every page, but it's presented in a casual, uncomplicated way. It is comforting to the people who are concerned, even afraid, of their prognosis, because the text provides a plan and a focal point every step of the way. Thank you for, so much for providing us with this remarkable book. From fear to hope, the comments keep coming in. Thriver Soup is really helping people find options and hope. So I want to talk about how this can be useful in your life. I'm living proof. I'm not talking about a cure. I'm talking about healing ourselves, healing our bodies, healing our hearts, healing our minds. And this raises up life force energy in the body, so the body can rebalance itself and sometimes shed the illness. 
So the first step is working on our attitudes. When I was diagnosed, I was a really good victim. And part of the reason is because I was like a walking head. I wasn't living in my body. I started seeing a psychotherapist and she taught me how to live in my body. This allowed me to move from being a victor to being, to, from moving from being a victim to being a victor. A victim mentality is when we feel hurt, but we're not experiencing the sensations of hurt in our bodies as it is. I had to learn to experience the hurt in my body without thinking about it, without analyzing it, without judging it, without making stories up. This allowed me to move to an attitude of a victor. A second attitude adjustment I needed was to move from worry to surrender. Worry happens when we experience fear in the body without processing it in a healthy way. Once I learned how to process my fear in a healthy way, I could move into surrender, which is when we work to do the best we can and we let go of any attachment to the outcome. A third attitude I had was lots of resentment. My therapist said I was dripping with resentment. That had to go if I wanted to survive. So I worked really hard on letting go of my resentment and developing an attitude of gratitude. This all, is in, all this information is in Thriver Soup, in the Mapping the Emotions section. Bonnie is a Thriver Soup reader from Fort Worth, Texas. She was diagnosed with what nobody wants, breast cancer. She, at first, got a lot of help. Everybody came out of the woodwork to help her because she had two young teenagers and her husband was out traveling all the time for his job. Well, they went back into the woodwork after a couple of months and Bonnie was left with all the household chores, not knowing how she was going to get to treatment and back, not having a way to get the house clean and the grocery shopping done. She was in a fix. Her solution she opened up Thriver Soup and read the entry, Resentment, Raging Bull, and realized she needed to shed the resentments and work on gratitude. So she wrote out page after page after page of resentments, shredded them all, and resolved to let that go and focus instead on creating gratitude in her life. So she began keeping a gratitude journal. Friends started coming back out of the woodwork to help her. She got the treatment she needed. She got the help she needed. She got the rest she needed. Now she's thriving. So once we change our attitudes, we can begin reconstructing our behaviors. One behavior that most people think about when they think of cancer is diet. Now, there's something in the blood called albumin. It is an indicator of your nutritional status and can be found with a blood draw. If an albumin level is 2.5 or below when someone is diagnosed, they tend to have a poor prognosis, whatever the type and stage of cancer. If it's above 3.5, they tend to have a better outcome. I had highly aggressive end-stage cancer. My albumin level was 4.2. Clearly, diet was not going to save my life. But it did make a big difference in how comfortable I felt. I was told, for example, that I would lose my hair within 21 days of starting chemotherapy. It took 21 months. This is 21 months after I started chemotherapy. And as you can see, the Donald trumped my comb over but now I drop his. Diet can make a big difference. Lowering inflammation levels can help you be a lot more comfortable when you go through treatment. A second behavior change can be a sitting practice. For me, all the meditation practices that I had been exposed to up to this point were based on the mind, and I needed a body-based practice. 
So I developed, or I worked with a new practice that I found out about through a man named Bruno Guerni. Keep the spine straight, keep the palms up, ask for fear and doubt to be let go of, ask to be filled with faith and trust and healing energy, and then spend 10 minutes just experiencing sensations in your body without thinking about them. 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the evening. This raises up life force energy in the body, which is really important when there's a chronic diagnosis. I explain more about how to do that in Thriver Soup. A third behavior change that I needed to make was to experience the sensations of emotions in my body. I talk extensively about this in Thriver Soup because for me this was a life-saving practice. It involves, if I experience fear, I focus on the sensations which might be butterflies in my stomach. I don't think about them. I don't think about the cause of my fear. I don't make a story. I don't judge it. I simply experience the butterflies. The butterflies might move around. They might move into my head. They might move into my big toe. They might get really intense. But if I stay with the sensations, after about 90 seconds, it lifts. Now, if I start thinking about it again, then, of course, I have to start over with focusing on the sensations and to stop the thinking. Sometimes I do this for an hour at a time before I get relief. But I get relief. My body has processed the emotions in a healthy way and I am in a much better place when it's all over. So once we change our attitudes, we can reconstruct our behaviors. I can give you an example of a woman who has Parkinson's disease. She was having trouble going up and down stairs. She was having trouble with a lot of shaking. She had a, a lot of panic about her future. What was going to happen to her? She couldn't function in daily life. The solution? She read an entry in Thriver Soup called Anxiety Pills. And here's what she wrote. Thriver Soup suggests feeling my feelings, actually experiencing the sensations in my body, and to just let them be. Eventually the emotions receded. I felt such gratitude for this practice. These suggestions turned out to be an invaluable aid to me. By letting go of the anxiety and managing it in a healthy way, she had more life force energy in her body, which enabled her to do more exercising, do more work with her will, make better choices with her food. Now she's going up and down stairs and she's not shaking as badly. She's thriving for somebody with Parkinson's disease. So changing our attitudes and behaviors can have a huge impact on our lives. But there's another step to go through, and that could be making major life choices. A major life choice can be leaving a high-stress job or other situation, ending an unhealthy relationship, I knew a woman with end-stage breast cancer. I suggested she stop her relationship with her mother. She did for six months, and during those six months, the cancer stopped growing. But then she went back to the relationship, and she passed away. So it has to be a serious long-term decision to end an unhealthy relationship if that is influencing your experience with chronic dis-ease by creating too much stress in your life. And another is to approach the cancer from every angle. There's a woman named Sheila. She has Lou Gehrig's disease. She made the commitment to approach the cancer from every angle. Medical, physical, nutritional, emotional, social, mental, and spiritual. And here's what she writes. I read Thriver Soup because I'm going through my own war zone of ALS. I need all the help I can get, and Thriver Soup is helping me see that it is possible to get to the other side 
even when everyone tells you that it is impossible. I'm now guarding my health, clearing out stresses, eating wholesome food, adding food supplements, meditating, finding alternative healing methods, because medical science doesn't have anything good yet to offer for ALS, taking naps, pursuing my dreams, and living my life. She's been taking trips. She's been getting the help she needs. She is thriving considering her situation. She's not cured, but she is doing far better than she would have been if she hadn't been taking up these major life choices. And the major life choice does not necessarily end with round one. An attitude shift can lead to a major life choice. A major life choice can lead to changed behaviors. It's a cyclical, progressive process. It needs to be revisited again and again when dealing with a chronic disease. If you want to find out more, if you want to find out ways to heal your life, Thriver Soup has 250 options that you can try. I also have a blog that comes out every week you can sign up for. If you sign up for my blog, I'll send you a list of my top 10 tips for dealing with cancer. And then you'll get the weekly blog in addition to that. On the website, I have guided visualizations that can be explored for possibly talking to any diseased cells in the body. I've had people discover that the reason for their pain in the shoulder was that they were shouldering too many responsibilities. It's all individual. The guided visualizations will give you ideas on which path to follow for your healing. So take a look in the mirror. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Take a look at your life. See what it is that you can adjust and shift and change to raise up more life force energy in the body. ThriverSoup.com has solutions for you. And I would love to hear how these solutions are helping you get your life back.